So now we're gonna look at a double single, double single action. This would be like a SIG or the Beretta or any other gun with this type of, of mechanism. Why is it called a double single? Well, you can operate the hammer from two different methods, double action in one movement. The trigger actuates the hammer, cocking it, and releases it all in one movement. Single action, the hammer is cocked, and the trigger breaks the sear from the cocked position. A weapon like this is usually carried in this position, either on safe or in this mode. This particular Beretta does not have a safety. It only has a decocking lever. So with you folks with the SIGs and uh, regular 92s will also have the choice of a safety selector. So this gun would be carried in this position. If you were to come out of a holster, you would engage from here. After the gun fired, you would then be in single action. This is the challenge with this type of gun, is now you need to learn two trigger pulls. It can be done, some of the best shooters in the world shoot this type of weapon. Just go look at the guys for factory Beretta's team or uh, SIG's team and they're shooting double singles and you can do amazing things with it. Uh, what's the benefit? This is a big heavy steel gun. These, these double singles have a lot of weight behind them, which means the recoil is uh, very light. What else? That single action, boy is it sweet after shooting plastic guns. If you, uh, you have a gun like this in that single action mode and you're used to shooting a Glock or an M&P, that is just silky, silky smooth. What is there you got to think about in addition to the, the striker fired? So there's a reason those striker fired pistols are so widely used. They're just so darn easy. You got another step or two you got to add into this. So with this particular weapon, if you're loaded up and you want to come back to the holster, Especially after shooting, if you're in this position, you need to depress the, the decock lever. If you've got a safety, you engage the safety at that point and then safely come back to the holster. Notice where my thumb is. Can you zoom in on that, Drew? So when you've got an exposed hammer like this, it is a great habit to hold that hammer down as you come back to the holster. You're not drawing like this, but you're holstering up like that. Your draw is still that good master grip. But after you're done shooting, holding that hammer in that position is another added safety feature of letting you know this gun is not going to go off. I am holding the hammer forward. Why do we do that? Well, as we all know, holstering is where most accidents happen. If you were to accidentally come into the holster and something got a hold of that trigger, like some clothing or some debris, and you started actuating it, having your finger there not only impedes it from moving, but it tells you, hey, something's going on here. So with these double singles, there's a trade-off for that sweet single action trigger. You've now got to deal with this hammer. And we're not talking about a 1911, we're talking about these double singles where you can actually decock this thing. You're going to bring your thumb to the back position here to decock. When doing that, you are indexing that hammer against the side of your thumb. I can now feel, even with my eyes closed, that that hammer is in the rear position. I know, oops, decock. Now when I come back up, everything feels as it should be. Just like the other guns, you need to build repetition. This is why we don't want you guys jumping from gun to gun to gun. You need to be one with the tool. This is how you do it. We're gonna load this baby up. So the loading process is just the same as it was with the other firearm we were using earlier, the striker fire. You're going to load. Same fashion, I'm giving a tug to that magazine and now I have a choice. Do I want to come over the top or do I want a slingshot? From this position, I think I'm going to come over the top. I like that. I let that slide go forcefully home. Now I've got another choice. From this position, I can come out and fire in that single action mode. But I know if I'm going to carry this weapon, I'm going to be carrying it in double action mode. So I'm not going to cheat myself out of that learning lesson with the double action. So you're going to see, we're going to press out the first shot. If you guys watch that hammer, see that hammer moving? You watch that hammer come back. Now where is it? It's in that rear position. So now, if I wanted to work on double action, I could decock and just work on that double action, or I could enjoy the sweet, smooth, silkiness of that single. We're going to do that another time for you. So as we come out on the target, we've got that long double action pull. After that, 
we now get to enjoy the benefits of that single action. This thing is too hard to not enjoy. I'm gonna do that one more time. So just like our plastic gun, we've got our magazine in a good index position, come out of our mag holder, we insert, we give a good tug, seat lock tug. I'm gonna come over the top or I can slingshot. I let the slide slam forcefully home. With this double single, I don't wanna rob myself of the ability to practice the double action pull. So I'm gonna decock as I start this drill. So I can come out, you're gonna watch that hammer come back. As that hammer comes back off that first shot, now I get to enjoy the benefits of a gun like this. I've got that sweet, sweet single action trigger pull. Look at that. Very, very easy. And this is a tuned up gun, so it's even better. Now comes the part where you gotta pay attention. If you go back to the holster like this, that is not safe. We got a very light trigger pull. You gotta make sure you decock. So our thumb comes back, we swipe the decocker, right? I'm now gonna come up over the top of the hammer and I can come back to my holster position. Make sure when you're working with these double singles that you understand how all these moving parts work and why. There's a benefit to them and there's some drawbacks and that drawback is that you've got more stuff that you need to add into your data bank. Be careful. Did you go out and buy one of these thinking it'd make you or your family safer, but now it just sits in the safe? Take a class, get some training, and practice. Having a weapon doesn't make you any safer than having a guitar makes you a musician. You need to think about this as a lifestyle, a way of life. Having a tool, a vehicle, a guitar, whatever, doesn't do anything unless you know how to use that implement. Get training. Make it a lifestyle to have this weapon with you and know and understand how to use it. This is Mickey with CarryTrainer.com. Contact us today to set up a class at your home range.